We tell stories at Milwaukee PBS. Here's one you may have missed. Sister Michelle Oli, a Racine Dominican, also has a deep interest in education, so much so that she once led a public school board. As a member of the National Coalition of American Nuns, she also has a passion for social justice and women's issues. At 90 years old, her frame of mind remains one of finding common ground. I think um, I was made to be who I am. I was born in Racine in 1927. I lived at uh, on Grove Avenue until I was about 11 years old. I was one of seven. Ed became a priest. I was a good student. I didn't date much. However, we went to large parties. It was the only community I knew, and I kind of liked their habit. <laughs> One of my first assignments was up to Merrill. Four years as teaching, and then I went back and was principal. I got my degree in physics at Notre Dame. I was a teacher for 20 years. I certainly would like to see women in politics. I'm interested in education wherever it's happening. And I said, this, the public school is a very key part for the good of the community. So I said that I'm ready to uh, do my best and help them be the best. We had three strikes while I was there, two of which I was president. And I learned a lot by it. The first one was settled within 10 days and the other one was a little longer, but the third one was 50 days. It was terrible for the community and it was terrible for the board. When we actually implemented it, it was the most peaceful desegregation in the country. And they said it over and over. One of the rules we said at that time, we don't want the police around. And then we said, but if we need you, we will call you. We voted that we would do this, but we wouldn't do it for two years because we should get the people ready. And that's what we did. We had so many uh, meetings in services and whatnot that was wonderful. We've got to learn to live in a society where we can deal with all color and languages. He called me up on the phone. I was making supper and he said, I'm just wondering if you could uh, join our cabinet. And I said, you're asking me to come in your cabinet? I said, you don't even know me. And, uh, and he says, oh, I do, I do. And he says, and you have a number of priests in the cabinet that know you, and they recommend you too. So they called it Episcopal Delegate in charge of Christian formation. He would always be supportive. I think the couple should uh, make the decision. The Catholic Church has said the highest authority is your conscience. The two people have to make their own decision. I don't like abortions, but I think there are cases in which they have to do it. We found out things that were before anything came out. And, you know, you because a sister was in the parish and she knew something was happening, she spoke up, but she was fired by the pastor. I mean, they get rid of them. They did not have their policies there. When do you have to tell the uh, civil authority? And I know that some of the government human services 
I think they believed that the pastors, or the whoever is higher than the pastor, that they were doing the right thing because they were counseling and, and they were taking care of them. But they didn't, I mean, they didn't do it. I think they, maybe they're naive, but I think they thought they could take care of it. And you can't. I think it could happen, but I think they could not just say women, married people. I don't want to be a priest, but I never did, because it's just too much work. I mean, it's, it's you know, you, you're put on a pedestal. Right now, we're dying out. There's some change has to happen. I think about 20 years ago, some of us were saying, we should really have uh, a community that has temporary vows. Parents want the children they have to have children. And right now, I think there's so many opportunities for women. My class, on our 25th anniversary of our vows, we went to Ohio uh, to this interfaith conference. And Mother Therese was uh, one of the featured speakers. And my friend and I were helping set up. And she walks in just as nonchalant, you know. And we both of us, you know, opened our mouths and could, could hardly believe she's with us. So we went over and it was just all soft talk, you know. She was amazing. She spoke so simply. We listened to her, and I think she brought out her theology of saying to help the poor, and all her things that she did. It was just wonderful. The legacy is that a, um, a woman can have influence on almost every part of life and whether it's uh, teaching little children or uh, negotiating with the union. One of my principles is that I always talk to the people that do not agree with me. I would try to see if there's any common ground, no matter what faith it is, we certainly can find common ground in something. This is what I believe. <laughs> Jesus says, come together. He said that the Last Supper, you know, let us be one. And I think he was talking to everybody. Watch 1036 on Milwaukee PBS and watch online at milwaukeepbs.org.